Hey everyone, my name is Irina and welcome to Stories with the Shepherdess. This is episode one of Stories with the Shepherdess. I wanted to find some way to connect with customers while I was here at the store and also update people on the farm life, what's happening in my personal knitting, and new events and products that we're getting in at the store. So I thought, what better than a video cast? I don't know if I'm going to be structuring this more as a podcast or a video blog, but I'm excited to see where the next year takes me. So to begin, I want to start with my flock talk segment. Um, I'm going to be discussing briefly how we farm in the winter. We do farm off the grid, so we really have to worry about frozen water buckets, getting enough hay to the animals, and making sure that our shelters are going to withstand the heavy winds that we encounter in our little valley of a farm. It's essential to have woolens. My favorite, my favorite piece of farm clothes that I wear is my early rising hat designed by Annie Rowden and knit up in Lester long wool worsted weight. I don't think I could farm without it. It's great during the lambing season as well because if we do have lambs that are having a tough time getting started, I actually like to get them going by rubbing this on their bodies just to warm them up a little bit. Farming in the winter looks a lot like this and this. It can also be beautiful. And actually, even though we find that it can be quite difficult, the sheep don't mind. Their bodies are equipped to handle such tough temperatures and they have wool sweaters on. What is better than a proper wool sweater? Moving on to what's on my needles. I have a few projects going. I'm trying really hard this year to be more mindful in what I'm making and also to have a better structure going on. So first, what's on my needles is a shop sample. This is the Rove Cowl by Annie Rowden. It's a mosaic knit cowl and you make this tube and then you twist it and you mattress stitch it together. It's gonna be so lovely and so soft. I've knitted out of our Yorkshire Medley yarn in the colors River Esque, which is the dark gray, and then Rothwell Gold, which is the bright pop of yellow. I was a little bit hesitant to put these colors together at the start, but once I started working with them, I really, really do love it. It's squishy and warm, and I think that overall it's going to be great for next winter as an accessory. The best part is, is it only takes two skeins of the main color, which is the River Esque, and one skein of the contrast, which is Rothwell Gold. So it's really not that bad of a project, and it's even good to stash dive. This one will stay at the shop, so I'm planning on casting on another one for me once I'm done with this one here. So that's my first project that's on my needles. Next up, part of winter farming is always making sure that you have the best socks possible. So I've actually, um, I'm working on a quick design called the best boot socks ever. And um, I have just picked up the gusset last evening. So it's in the kind of awkward banana shape right now. Um, but the brown is going to be our North American Wensleydale DK weight. We have a shipment of that coming back from the mill sometime in um, late March, early April. So make sure to keep watching for that. It's a really, really lustrous three-ply DK and we absolutely adore it. And then the green here is a little bit of leftover Yorkshire Medley from one of my prior designs. And this is in the colorway Winnie Moore Hops. It's just a really nice bright pop of color. And I think that the heel flap is gonna be my favorite part about this design. Um, I am so excited to get going and share it with you all. I'm hoping that it can be a free Ravelry pattern and I'll probably have it going in three sizes, an adult small, medium, and large. Right now I'm testing this. This is definitely going to be the adult small. It fits me really nice and snug, which is what you need when you are working on the farm because anything that is loose is going to slip off of you. Um, but I'm really excited to get this going and get a few more pairs on my needles to make sure that everything is perfect. So keep watching for that as well. So what I just finished. Firstly, I'm going to talk about it's not the prettiest knit that I've ever done, but it's definitely one of the most special ones to me. Um, we had a customer come in for a workshop and we actually sold this customer our first sheep ever. The sheep was named Noelle and she was a Coriadale Coopworth cross. We loved her so much, but we did need to move her along once we decided to introduce Wensleydales to our flock. She was a great beginner sheep. She taught us, you know, the effective ways to lamb, how to give shots. She was a wonderful girl, but we really had to hone in on our mission of preserving the British long wools, so we did have to sell her. But this customer still has Noelle. She is getting 
old now, so she's changing color. She's much lighter. She's more of a coffee with cream color now instead of a, you know, medium brown. But the customer, we were in a little weaving shop um, that I was instructing, and she was using hand spun from Noelle, the sheep. And she gave me some because she has so much in her stash because we probably sold Noelle to her eight years ago now. Um, and so I made the lambing mitts and they are not the prettiest because I have been using them so heavily but here they are. Um, the hand spun was like a light chunky heavy Aran so knitting it on the gauge that the Tolt website instructed gave a really lovely dense fabric. I actually made these because I was looking for fingerless mitts that I could still open up the padlocks on all of our pastures with but I could also roll up over my hands in the bitter sub-zero temperatures that we had had in the last few months. So they're perfect, they go up to the proper height but then you can also fold them down if you just just one every day. So this morning when I was at the, when I was getting farm chores all sorted, um, I did have them rolled down because it wasn't that chilly out. But this is one of my favorite recent finished objects. Um, they're definitely the most heavily used knits uh, right there next to the early rising hat. So I'm very, very excited to keep using these for years to come. And it's so special that it's wool that came from my first sheep ever. My next most recent finished object is the Isley Cardigan by Gundren Johnston. It's knit up in Quince & Co. Chickadee in the color Peacoat, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deep blue color. I found these vintage buttons in my mom's collection, and I think that they're going to be so perfect for this charming little knit. It didn't take as long as I expected. I was a little bit unsure about how the lace patterning would look as I was working on it, but once you start do decrease for around the neck, it really does come all together. The eye cord around it gives it a great finished look and I am so excited to get these buttons on and have this hanging in the shop. In addition to the farm and my knitting and all of this um, other stuff that I kind of do in my spare time, I, I own a yarn shop. Um, that is my first and foremost um, bit on my resume. I have been involved in the yarn shop since it opened, since my mom opened it in 2009. Um, at first I was just the girl that would help out on the weekends when I wasn't in school and then I became the I became the bookkeeper and it just kind of then like the store manager and now I'm co-owner um, and it's a really great relationship that I my mom and I have on a business level as well as a personal level because she's able to really focus on the farming and growing her flock and working with all of the breed associations for the sheep that she raises and I can focus on growing our bricks and mortar store business as well as the farm. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of exciting things that are happening in February at uh, Flying Fibers. We are at 329C Main Street in Landisville, Pennsylvania, and I will put links to all of the classes that I'm about to list down in the description area below. So firstly, I am teaching a intro to needle felting. I have a few spots left, so hurry up and grab them before they're gone. I really love teaching intro to needle felting. It's really just a fabulous fun class. It's a great way to relieve stress, and it's also a nice way to introduce people to like real 100% wool rope it really is about that tactile experience of learning how to work with real wool. So we have intro to needle felting on February 3rd from 10 to noon. Uh, we're also teaching an intro to entrelock class on February 17th. That's going to be really, really wonderful as well. Gail is a wonderful instructor, so I'm so excited to see all of the beautiful pieces that go with that class. We're also teaching the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. It's a great pattern. They're a great set of designers. Their patterns are so clear written and it's just really great for people to um, get going and you know really increase their knowledge on knitting so I'm teaching that February 20 February 18th sorry last year it was the 20 something so um, yeah February 18th is when I'll be teaching that so that's really lovely and that should be it for this month um, so please check out the links below and I can't wait to maybe see you all in class we're closing in on the end of January, and we actually just finished up a whirlwind weekend at Vogue Knitting Live in New York City. 
Jerry was giving a lecture on rare breed British long wools, Jerry's my mom, in case you didn't know, um, and we actually had a booth there on the sixth floor, so we just had a wonderful weekend. It was kind of great to get away and experience the big city and sell our wares and introduce people to British long wools if they've never been introduced before. Um, I was able to take a class on Sunday morning, which was so lovely. Um, my mom actually ran into Annie Rowden at the teacher meeting on Thursday and her classes had sold out super fast. If you don't know, Annie Rowden is a fabulous knitwear designer. She designed our Bahal shawl using Yorkshire Medley, which is our exclusive British long wool yarn, and she's a natural dyer and goat farmer. She is so wonderful. So she, my mom ran into Annie at the teacher meeting and was like, oh, Irina so terribly wanted to take your bundle dyeing course on Sunday. And Annie was like, oh my goodness, just have her sit in. It won't be a problem. We got all the paperwork sorted with the Vogue people, and I was actually able to fully participate in the class as well which was awesome so I just wanted to show you I am NOT a massive sock knitter but I am so excited to get started on these socks this is a sock blank that I uh, bundle dyed and it was a really wonderful experience. I've naturally dyed before. We actually started Flying Fibers um, as a felt um, hat and bag business, and then we also naturally dyed silk undergarments and sold them to a little boutique in um, on the south part of Lancaster. So I've naturally dyed before, but I've never bundle dyed, and it was just the most wonderful experience, and I am so excited to see how I can use that skill that I learned at Vogue and progress um, even further and experiment with our Yorkshire Medley bases and the flock yarn. Um, so just going through quickly, the red here at the top is going to be matter. It gives you a really lovely red color. Then I've got some onion skins. The bright pop of color here is going to be cochineal, which are little bugs, which make this gorgeous color. Um, let's see here. I've got some more onion skins. The kind of purpley brown here is going to be alkanet root, which is a really lovely color I'm quite keen on. I've got little petals here, little petal shapes. Those come from marigold petals, which are really wonderful. Um, I've got some more... Onion, cochineal, alkanet. Oh, this bit here is actually from Dahlia Petals, which was really lovely. This kind of blue gray. And then this center section was Rudbeckia Petals as the kind of more defined petal look. And then the beige coloring behind it actually comes from crushed and dried nettle. Um, I asked Annie how nettle would react on the sock blanks, uh, especially because most of the time you do want to use dried plant matter. Um, we just have so much nettle at the farm that I just wanted to find some way to incorporate incorporate it into my everyday dyeing without having to do the full kettle dyed natural dye look. So I was really excited with how this turned out. Going down I've got more onion skin, cochineal, etc. And then down at the bottom is a finishing bit of Rudbeckia, Marigold, and Alkanet Root. Um, I am so excited. I just love how this looks. I'm not a big fingering weight sock person, but I these are going to be the most special special socks I've ever knit. So that is going to be really lovely. Um, I'm a little bit afraid to unwind it because it looks so gorgeous in the blank. I just don't want to ruin the integrity of the piece. Um, so that was the really exciting part about Vogue in addition to my mom giving the lecture and us being able to introduce British long wools to a bunch of people. So overall, it was such a good weekend. I'm happy to be home in Lancaster. I really missed uh, the sheep and the shop and everything about Lan Lancaster, but it was really exciting to be back in the big city for a little bit, especially on a professional level. It was a really wonderful experience, and I can't wait for next year. I think there's going to be so many exciting things happening this year, um, and that will just make Vogue that much better. So I am so excited that you all sat through and experienced the first Stories with a Shepherdess with me, and I can't wait to see you all next time.